What is up guys, it's Troy the Full Setup back with another review for you and today we have a review of a mechanical keyboard. So this is the MK6 Bullet Hunter and this is made by First Player and they've sent me over a couple of these keyboards to review. Now this keyboard is available for $50, you can't buy it in the UK so sorry to my UK audience. Um, and also on Amazon at the moment they are doing a $5 discount so it's a $45 RGB blue switch mechanical keyboard with software and some programmable macro features as well. Now I want to say a big huge thanks to First Player because they are actually sponsoring my um, Ryzen 3000 launch. They're going to be sponsoring all of those gaming videos and they provided some keyboards for giveaways over the next couple of months. Now obviously that competition isn't starting till July because that's when the Ryzen 3000 launches. But if you're watching this video now, you can go down to the comment section, not the comment section, the description, and you can find a link on how you can enter the competition. Now we're gonna take a closer look at the keyboard in a minute. We're gonna do an unboxing. We're gonna do some lighting tests, typing tests, gaming tests, and I'm also gonna show you the software. But before we start with the video, I wanna give you a sort of an update on where we're up to for my sort of getting a little system ready for Ryzen 3000. Now the first thing was picking a motherboard. I didn't want to buy an X570 on launch um, just because it's maybe bugs with the X570, a new CPU and possibly maybe even an AMD graphics card all in the same day is a lot of stuff to test. I don't get it sent early so I do feel pressured to get the video up. I tend not to now. I'm happy to wait a couple of days to do a more quality video but I thought you know what the whole thing that everyone's been raving about with AM4 is that you can just upgrade them. You know, you can keep your motherboard and keep putting newer CPUs in it. So we're going to use this Gigabyte B350, B450, B450 motherboard. This is the Aorus Elite that I picked up for £50 open box return. Got an absolute deal on it. One thing I'm a little bit confused with is what memory should I push and I'd really be interested on your thoughts on that. So I know that everyone has said with Ryzen 3200 megahertz RAM and that is what I've mostly tested out with but with tighter CL14 timing. So do you want me to start with 3200 megahertz? Now even though this is a budget board when my Samsung B dies I've been able to push 3466 at CL14 and I've also been able to push 3600 megahertz at around about CL15 not quite stable yet but then i'm thinking when we put the new ryzen 3000 chip in it i should hopefully be able to get that stable anyway i'm moving all over the place because i'm going backwards and forwards and i'm waffling on when this is supposed to be a first player keyboard review let's get the keyboard unboxed and now it's a pretty plain packaging really first player's logo is written super tiny up here mechanical keyboard and then probably the same in chinese then we have the name of the keyboard which is their mk6 bullet hunter over here we have CIY, which I do not know what that means. Physical keys, well, hope for it to have some sort of physical keys because if it hasn't got a key, then can't use it as a keyboard. 16.8 million colors, as we know with RGB, and fingers love. Now there's a lot of things in this life that my fingers love, but I think we'll just sort of keep that away from this video and just concentrate on my keyboard finger love. Over to the side here, we've got new invader, player first. That's Obviously, I can't be bothered to wait for that to focus, but that just is the MK6 logo, mechanical keyboard, and there's a little spider on it there. Don't know what that's for. Now, I really like the back of this, actually, because any of you will know, with mechanical keyboards, because you've got quite high-raised keys, they get incredibly grubby, you eat snacks while you're gaming. All of my keyboards need a clean. The only reason I don't clean them is because people keep sending me keyboards, and I'm like, ah, I'll clean it another time, i got a fresh new one. But this has got all the keys on the back, which is great because I normally take them all off. I take a few off and put them, sort of dot them. So I know exactly which ones go back because I always find with Chinese keyboards, they seem to just have one key in a random place or something. But enough waffling. We got ourselves a little key diagram on the back here. And I think that's really good for if you take all the keys off, clean them, maybe you knock them over, push them out of the way. Now I'd definitely say the packaging is space saving. Again, with lots of other cheap, cheaper keyboards, you know, they're not exactly extremely well packaged, but you know, I love that Game Max keyboard and that one was packed very well. Got some bubble wrap, there's the keyboard, we'll put that to one side. There should also be a driver disc. And I'm gonna go through all the software at the end of the video. We're gonna do that sort of right at the end after my final thoughts, but I'll talk about the software a little bit in my final thoughts. Then there is a manual here how to connect it to a computer. Um, it's probably gonna have some stuff about the buttons in it and stuff as well that you need to press, but I'll show you all that in a minute. And then we have this little back. Keycap puller. 
Okay, Max, what did I say to you? Everyone ships a keycap puller. That was the only negative point I had about the last keyboard I reviewed. <laughs> it didn't have a keycap puller. This keyboard's got a lot to live up to after the last one I reviewed. But look at this. Wow. We have five spare key switches. And uh, I know this rustling's going to be all over, all over the camera. You're going to hate it. And we have this little puller as well. So we'll show you how to pull that. Show you how to pull it off, boys. So here is the keyboard then, and I must say it's it's light. It feels light. It's it's heavy enough, but it feels light for a mechanical keyboard of this size. Whether you think that's a good thing or a bad thing. Now that is a braided cable, and it is extremely long. Braided cable. Gold connects on the end. I'm not really sure if that makes a bloody difference for a keyboard, but. Now my first gripe here is that this USB cable is not removable. I'll show you down the bottom as well. We've got this sort of textured surface. And then there are two foot switches and we have four rubber grommets to keep it nice and safe. Now in its upright position, it is quite comfortable to type on, but I would have really have liked to hand rest definitely would have liked a hand rest let's plug it in and this is going to be the one that I give away this is the unused one this is what we give away so we've got this nice black finish here we've got first player written over at the top now there is like a little chrome finish that goes all the way around it oh, it's not for me it's not for me I don't like the beveled finish now the keys got a little complaint here with the keys now if you look over the top at the media keys the printing isn't very good on them. You especially notice it on the home key and the calculator key. So I don't know how long these are going to stay on it. I've been using the other keyboard for about two and a half weeks now and they're still there. But that's something that definitely is a little complaint of mine. But overall, I'm really liking the finish on it. Now this uses blue switches and I'm going to do a comparison in a minute versus red switches as well. Now I know one thing you're going to be interested in is how you do the RGB, especially um, if you do not want to install the software, maybe you just don't want any extra bloatware on your computer, or if you just like to do it from a click of a button rather than software. Now all you have to do really is press the FN button, and it's a bit weird because each one from, from the insert switch to page down has three different effects. I think that one's the touch one, yeah. So each one has three different effects on each one. So it's a little bit weird to remember where they all are. Normally I'm usually just, you've got two cycle effects and there may be a separate one for solid color. Now you can adjust the speed by using FN and plus or FN, FN and minus, FN and plus. You can do the brightness via the up and down keys and you can change the direction of the effect via the arrows. Now, if I could make a complaint about it, it would be the brightness. This is the dimmest RGB keyboard I've got. All the other keyboards I've got that feature RGB are feel like they're about 10 to 20% brighter than this. It's fine in a dark game, gaming environment, but I know I've got the light on so we can see the keyboard more clearly, but it's not very bright at all. It is a bit dim. That might be good if you don't like maximum brightness, maybe if it's, you know, shared room or something like that. But for me, I would have just liked to have seen it a little bit brighter. Now, a couple of extra really nice features that I like on this keyboard would be when you get to the end and the beginning of the cycle. So when you're at max brightness, you can see that the light. So when you're at the end of any cycle, you can do that. And I absolutely love these media keys over here as well. So this one adjusts the volume. Look at that. Then we have a mute button. Also brightness. So I don't know if that's for a laptop. I haven't tested that myself. Then there is play and pause. And you can also change tunes as well. So I really do like that little feature that they've got there. I feel like I'm making quite a few little complaints about this. This bit of plastic here is wiggling all over the place see if we can take you right in see here just wiggles about and my other one does it as well so whatever they're putting either side of this little volume rocker yeah not really feeling that so first you want to take your puller to be fair you can just take the escape key off of your fingers anyway so then from the side of the keycap simply 
pinch it and pull now i got that off incredibly easy they are actually really hard to pull the keycaps are very hard to pull off so do expect to put some force on i sort of semi took it off and put it back on but that is how you swap the keycap so i wanted to do like a little sort of typing test i'm not going to type anything up on screen but i sort of wanted to compare blues versus reds now on my last video where i did this a couple of you were saying that the reds the red keyboard this is the zami keyboard sounded a lot louder than red should actually do because reds are really quiet and that's sort of how i had this microphone from the camera position so it was sort of down here somewhere so i did say what you want to be listening to is the difference in sound not how loud each one is just the difference you know reds are quiet and you know the blues are sort of louder so i thought i might try something a little bit different for this video because this is how i would normally be set up if i did a live stream which i haven't done in forever so i'll probably do one soon um and i would have my road microphone i'd have this microphone here this is the procaster microphone just in front of me and to be fair it does a very good job at cutting out even blue switches even the blue switches that i was using it does a very good job at cutting them out obviously you've got the voice talking while you're on the stream you've got the game playing as well so um it's probably not going to capture the same sort of sound difference you would hear from this microphone do you want to just do a should we do a quick test on that microphone so you can hear the blues here super clicky really bottom out and we've got the whites nice and quiet so what we're going to do now is sort of see what it would sound like as if i was doing a stream so these would be the blues again very clicky right to bottom out mostly because you're going to be doing hitting the space bar a lot especially if you're playing first person shooters when doing a live stream so you'll be hitting the space bar hitting the enter key and stuff to get yourself respawned so those were the blues sort of a live stream sort of sound you would get and this microphone as well the way that this microphone sort of developed is um it's got to be very close to you it's a dynamic microphone so if you were using something like a blue condenser microphone something like that you're going to be hearing the keyboard a lot more so this is the red switch very quiet there you go that's the space bar there space bar on the blue space bar on the red space bar on the blue space bar on the red so yeah if you were doing streaming you definitely want to be looking at reds maybe even browns because browns are a bit quieter than blues but i would fully recommend red for streaming clicky ah, love the click i do love the clicky blues i love the clicky blues do love blues absolutely love blues but reds are a joy to type on fancy rgb lighting cheap price software good type you know typing tests all that stuff all that stuff is great they're all things that you're looking to buy in a keyboard for but the most important thing most important thing that you're buying this keyboard for is gaming now i always normally use 10 keyless keyboards because i always say i've got tiny little t-rex arms that's why i use these small ones now after using the game max keyboard the one that i love one that i didn't want to give away now after using that keyboard you know i don't mind using full-size keyboards anymore i quite like using full-size keyboards now i prefer them also for this desk setup because i am quite squashed in i've got a lot of computers but yeah loving blue switches very hard for me to type in game at the same time but for gaming i think you'll really like this it's very responsive you can feel every click highly recommend it for gaming yeah it's as good as any other budget mechanical keyboard that i've used if you've not used mechanical switches before and you're looking to make the switch and you don't want to spend a lot of money definitely consider any budget keyboard i know i should obviously be promoting this one today but what have i got here i've got got one here i've had that over a year this one the one stuck in over there this dusty as hell i've had that three years nothing's gone wrong with it i've got another one here we've got the xiaomi one as well all cheap budget mechanical keyboards no complaints about any of them you do not need to spend hundreds and hundreds of pounds on a keyboard so there was the review then and there was a hell of a lot to cover we've still got to do all the software bit in a minute and before i get on to the pros and cons i do want to talk about the software bit that you'll see in a minute um, you'll see me make a comment where I'm like, oh, there's a couple effects that don't work. I think I cut most of the footage out. Basically, it's the reactive one. So like when you press it and then it lights up like that, 
Now, when you sort of press random keys on the keyboard while you're in Windows, you know, weird things are going to happen. And with the software, I sort of press it and it skips to a different profile. So, yeah, all of the reactive ones are just basically programmable ones that you just touch and then it starts doing stuff. Another thing I want to cover up a little bit is I did say that this, this um, keyboard is a bit dim and it still is. I'm still saying it's a little bit dimmer than my other keyboards, but not as probably bad as I was making out to be because obviously I've got quite a lot of lighting in this room and I did test it mostly without my photo lights on and the camera front photo light but then my main light I've got a bright light bulb in as well for YouTube even though I did have it dim so like when I had them off you know a few days later I was like actually it's not as bad but it's still a little bit dim I found it's dimmer on effects that move faster um, and some of those mosaic effects when you've got sort of like the RGB that sort of razor the original razor chroma colors where it's just a section of your keyboard it's probably as bright as the rest of my keyboard so you know what do I think of this pros and cons let's start off with the cons then so two cons which I'm not very happy with but at the same time this is a $45 keyboard and to be honest you're gonna have it the same with most of the other ones I've had a look look at some of my other budget keyboards and to be honest they're not the best media keys on all of them but yeah the media key the just the drawings on them just don't look very good at all also as well like I said I love that little volume rocker but that bit of plastic that's moving about each side that's on both of the keyboards as well you know that's something that could could has obviously been seen over there and and could be resolved and I would like to see resolved on a future model one other little con as well would be because Obviously, you can't buy this in the UK. Um, so if you did get it imported, just like any other keyboard you get imported, most cheap mechanical keyboards you buy off eBay are going to be a US layout even in the UK. But we did review that Game Max keyboard, the Game Max Strike. And for £40, the build quality is better than this. You know, although I prefer the blue switches on this keyboard, if you're in the UK, definitely go and get that Game Max Strike keyboard. Um, so yeah, to that con, when I'm, because I'm on the cons, I'm just waffling again. The con that I was going to say is it hasn't got a wrist rest. I would have liked to have seen it. But again, loads of keyboards this price don't come with a wrist rest. Pros then, it's nice to type on. I love blue switches. I love blue switches for gaming. Loads of RGB customization. Uh, sort of that you have, there's like nine different keys and each one has three effects. It's a little bit annoying. I'd rather just two keys I can cycle through. But then... At least you haven't got a cycle through loads, but it does have software. And that was my one negative point about the Game Max Strike. I said if it was £10 more expensive, it would have to have software. Luckily, it wasn't £10 more expensive. So, yeah, the software is good. There's some basic macro stuff. I never really use macros. I don't know how efficient that's going to be for you um, having those macro system on there. But there is some basic macro system. You can pull out the key switches. I've never had a key switch go on me, but you can do that. So that's good. What else? I think they're all the pros, really. I haven't reviewed many other keyboards. I've reviewed keyboards that are this price, around this price range, but I haven't reviewed one that I know you can really probably only buy in America. I don't know if they sell it in any countries, but I imagine most people watching this are going to be American viewers who are going to buy this keyboard. So I don't know what other competing keyboards you can get between $40 and $70. I'll be interested on what your thoughts would be below. But... It's not even fifty dollars, is it? It's forty. Yeah, forty-five dollars. That's a pretty good price. I would. Yeah, that's what you'd pay for it. I'd be happy with that. Let's just stop the waffle. Yeah. Um. Definitely, I would recommend this keyboard. There's an affiliate link in the description below. There is a competition link in the description below. Let's roll the software stuff. You can download the software for the Bullet Hunter over at First Player's website. I will put a link in the description for you. I know a lot of times I always forget this when I say I put a link. So if I don't, just remind me and I will get one for you. Now, as you can see here on screen, it's showing the current effect that we have. So this effect was set on the keyboard, doing it in real time. And it's given me a little bit of a seizure, but it looks pretty funky. Now, you have three profiles that you can use. Profile one, two, and three. There we go, three profiles. Now you can assign a macro to each one of those profiles. So all you do is start, hit the little plus button here, and then you can do record and record yourself a macro. Now I've never used macro, so you know I would be interested in your comments below if you are someone that uses macros on what you think these sort of abilities are that you can do. So obviously we can just record one in, blah, blah, blah. But yeah, macros aren't really for me. So what I really wanna show you is the lighting effects. Now. As default, when you open it, 
program that's all you'll see so you just literally tick that little like like button and from here you can adjust the brightness but i don't really think it works that much on the keyboard well maybe it does a bit so there we go we can try the brightness colorful is for the colorful now one thing you couldn't do was like solid colors um on the keyboard which was a little niggly point for me so then you can set solid colors the white is a very good white i will give it to first player it's a very good white on the thing but we're mostly going to test for the colorful as well and then certain options as well you can do the speed so there we go let's have a little look through so let's start from the top so we've got the first one which is the wave and you can also do the directions as well again speed and brightness wave b which just seems to be i think it's just got a little bit larger the just the gap in between the colors for wave b rotating slow that one down a little bit so we can see that at work we go so that's the rotating lighting effect and then this one's called mono monochromatic so that's just going to be going through one color at a time and you have the breathing again you can set this to solid colors let's go for like a pink change the speed up on it there we go We've got ourselves a pink static so that's just going to give you straight up solid color or solid multicolor. so something was going on a little bit weird then maybe a couple of light effects didn't work i think when i first tested they were all working so i have to get back to you on that one but then we've got the mosaic this is one of my personal favorites i do like this sort of like multicolor. i almost say it's like candy out of a sweet shop sort of color um this is one for me i really like you can also again do this in no that one doesn't that is just straight up multicolors. So the software needs a little bit of work, but it has software, which is what a lot of uh, keyboards do not have. So you can't really give them crap for that. Mosaic B. And there is the wave. So that's sort of going up and down the keyboard. Sound wave. I've always, I do like the sound wave one. I was going to try and do a sound wave impression then from Transformers, but I, I already knew I was screwing that thing up. So we'll leave that one. That's cool. Got a boom. <sighs> boom i like that one wonder if we could do that with different colors can we yeah so we can set a solid color for that mosaic c that's another sort of Ooh. you might want to slow the speed down on that one a little bit that's it that one's looking nice and then there's gradual which you just get sort of four colors to pick from can't see what that's really doing Don't know if that just changes shades of blue i imagine that just changed shades of blue scan in so that's sort of oof, coming in from the side and back again it would have been good to adjust the speed on that one it's just a little bit slow for me and then we have wave d now this is the one that i really like definition as you can see here just some of the keys have lit up because this has different programs now this is one i really like it's the definition one so as you can see here, we've just got a couple of the keys lit up. So this is sort of for first person shooter. Um, and you can customize all these. So there's MMO, MOBA, RTS, and then there's customized one. And the one reason I really like the customized one is because my girlfriend's little lad, he really wants to play on the PC with me. He wants a gaming PC like Troy, but his hands just ain't big enough yet. I've got a gaming computer at hers now. I've sat him on it for about five minutes and he wanted to go back on the Xbox and use a controller. But at a later date, once his hands are a little bit bigger, I'm going to show him how to use a keyboard and mouse because, I, you know, it might not be mine, but I, I don't want an Xbox pussy in the house, okay? So I, everyone's going to have to be a PC gamer. So, you know, I'm going to have to get him on the PC gaming. So what I actually customize is sort of this one. So there we go. Got all his movement. Reload on the red. Change weapons, grenades on the blue. Basic movement with the yellow as well. So... I really like that you can customize that and it's really simple really easy to customize so all you want to do is just you can just click on one so we're just going to erase one so we're going to raise the space bar and we'll click it again we'll click click the tool and now it's yellow but i can also change that pink if i wanted to to be fair you could create your own custom sort of lit keys and then you just erase them like that and that saves them um, and it's a feature that I really like. I think this feature would be very good for teaching people. I think if you're self going to teach someone, not even just a child, if you're going to teach a friend, this could be a very good way to teach that. 
sort of shooters and stuff because a lot of people at first if they don't use a computer that much they just see the whole keyboard that's all they see so i think it's really good that you can just set certain lights for people i'm even thinking about creating a separate profile with my girlfriend just with like f11 on and simple stuff because she she I always go go to hers and then she's got like a video open and like minimize screen so i might even create her a profile of buttons that she has to press as well